to my channel Frugalissima. My name's Sam and I want to talk about all things sewing, dressmaking, uh, some tips and tricks on how to sew on a budget and uh, I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed and uh, if you haven't subscribed if you could just subscribe and click the bell, the bell below that would be fantastic. Thank you very much and welcome if you're new. Um, so today I want to um, review the latest episode of the Great British Sewing Bee which uh, is now, we're on series 6 and this was episode 8. So we're down to the quarterfinals this week, uh, it was uh, international week. We had patterns from the Philippines and uh, France and Spain. So we're down to five contestants and uh, it's pretty much neck and neck now. There's a hard to, hard to pick a winner amongst them, uh, but sadly somebody has to go. Uh, and this is just a bit of a spoiler alert. So we'll talk about who won the garment of the week uh, and who was eliminated this week. Uh, so onto the first round, uh, we had a Filipino turno blouse. I think that was probably pretty new to quite a few people. Uh, particularly the contestants, I certainly hadn't heard of, of this blouse. Although, when they explained what it is, what it was rather, um, I recognised it from um, the, from history, uh, from the uh, the blouses that Imelda Marcos wore, which was a huge uh, butterfly sleeves, I call them. Uh, so very very exaggerated sleeves. So it had it's kind of a, a shortish cropped top uh, with French darts going into it, um, and then it, a squarish um, neckline uh, and quite a low back as well. So what I've been doing each week is looking at the patterns and fabrics that I've got uh, and seeing if I can find any free ones as well, and along with the ones that the contestants used to see if you, any, if you can recreate um, a pat the patterns that they, they use in the show. And I always challenge myself to, to make something inspired by the show as well. So let's get started. So for the first round with the uh, turno blouse, um, I wasn't able to find anything an exact match for that particular pattern. There were quite a few patterns that were either... You could make a start with with the, the, the pattern and add the, the sleeves yourself or um, just something that's more inspired by. My first thoughts when I saw that was the... Um, the Agnes blouse by Tilly, Tilly and the Buttons, uh, Agnes top, which is a stretch. It's not, you know, it's not got all the techniques, but it, the the sleeves are there uh, in one of the versions. Uh, so if you want it sort of a, um, a more of a Western uh, interpretation of it, shall we say, that could be a, an, a nod to it. And um, I found I had to look through my little stash to see what I could find, um, and I found this pattern that I've used a couple of times really simple basic top but if you can see there you've got a squarish neckline and that's probably done with a face tis done with a face in any way um, rather than the bias binding but I don't really think that matters and you can get the option to put sleeves sleeves in there as well um, you've not got the French darts that's uh, that's just normal normal darts on there and the the actual top that you, they used on the show was buttons all way all the way down the back um you could you could do that as well but i think something like that start that as a basis and you could then um, use the sleeves that's in that that pattern uh and there, there are some tutorials online to get that that full butterfly sleeve and effectively what you're doing is adding six six inches onto the cap of the sleeve and then you 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 gather it in until it, it, it matches the sleeve cap cap effectively. I will link uh, a tutorial for, for that in my blog post. I always do a blog post for these um, for these reviews. Uh, I think it's just a bit easier for people to find things. Uh, so I'll, I'll put a link to, the, to a blog post for that. The other one that I found, um, which again would be more of a basis uh, and the, both of these have been free patterns in magazines over the years. I've not, I've not actually bought those. Again, a very basic, basic sort of top there, uh, and you could probably just put put um, whatever sleeve you, you want on onto there. Uh, and then this one, 
and this is a Prima magazine one from 2017 so obviously if you're not subscribed to it you're not going to have this but I'm just trying to sort of say show you how how you can just take a basic top and add whatever you like so this one's already got the examples of all the different kind of sleeves and if you see this one here mood patterns has something very similar fairly similar on their website which does have the buttons down the back and that is called um, the Lionia top um, so essentially it's got two sleeves it's got a, a, a long sleeve and then a flounce sleeve over the top if you omitted that long sleeve or on, on this one as well and just um, did, did the um, butterfly sleeves which again you, could do, you would use the tutorial but that Lionia one from Mood that does have uh, the buttons down the back and it is quite cropped. I did actually start making that particular one as my little challenge, uh, but it is quite cropped and the buttons down the back, um, it's, it, it, it was using um, some part, sort of form of haberdashery that already had the button lo loops on. So I don't think, I think I would have had to do quite a lot of work for that, for something that I wasn't particularly bothered about at all. I printed it all off and, and then never got really around to, to making it. Also on Mood, there is um, a dress called the Poppy Dress and that has got the huge sleeves on it. Um, but the dress is really, really deep veed. So you would just be probably wanting to use the, the sleeves for that if you're wanting that kind of a effect. It's really well worth looking at the Mood website. They've got a lot of free patterns on there. I've never actually used any of their patterns. Um, and I think most of the instructions are on a, in the form of a blog post, uh, which is why I wanted to try that Lionio one, because I wanted to see just how, how good the instructions were, because I keep recommending these patterns and I've never actually used them before. Um, but like I say, I fell out of love with it and I, I don't really see the point of making something that I'm not going to wear. Um, so yeah, um, you, you've got lots of options there, just, just have a look around. And I think um, essentially what the contestants learn on this one is um, fabric choice is everything. Um, you, you know, you, you need a fabric with some structure to keep those sleeves up there, although they were putting some uh, tool in, in to, to hold that structure. Um, you, you really do need a fabric that's got that uh, initial structure to, to, to hold that shape. Um, so we'll go on to what the contestants made, starting with Mark, talking about fabric choice. He chose a, a silk crepe and it just wouldn't hold the, the shape of those sleeves. Uh, and I think it, at this stage, when you're down to the last five, you, you really need to know your, your fabrics and, and how they're going to behave. Um, so that, that fabric was far too dra drapey really for that top. Um, and I think uh, it frayed a lot as well. I think he struggled a lot with it fraying. Um, Matt chose a, a brocade, which initially did seem to be quite a good choice. He'd hold the sleeve um, poof, if you want to call it that. In fact, I don't think he inserted the, um, the tool into it. Um, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's one of those w words that I can never get right. Um, it, 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 I don't know if he managed to insert it, but it did, did hold it. And both um, Liz's and Claire's held it. I think the, the um, judges did pass a comment on Liz, Liz that she had not actually inserted hers, um, but it, it did hold, hold the, the actual shape of the sleeve. Um, Liz used a, a, tool, a tool, Claire used an organza which we, we both had embroidery on. My, my only comment on that was um, that both those, both Liz's and Claire's um, were see-through and I, I don't know, I just, I, it just seemed wrong, yes you, you'd wear something underneath it but it just seemed, it just seemed a bit, bit strange. Um, and Nicole chose, I think again, I think in her wisdom she she realised too late down the line that the fabric that she chose, although it did hold its structure, it did it did a good job of that. It was um it had um embellishments on it. It had uh, sequins or or beads. I think it was beads on it and embroidery as well. And it it 
it was just a nightmare to work with in that she had to snip all the beads off the seam lines in order to sew it. It wouldn't sew any buttonholes. Um, she wasn't able to make a bias binding with it. Um, so it's just, it just was completely the wrong fabric choice. So yeah, we did see uh, the contestants supposedly making uh, bias binding. Uh, so Liz decided to go with a contrast bias binding because I don't know if she didn't didn't want to do the um, use that particular um, fabric for it, but it did it looked really quite effective. Uh, but Nicole sort of there was no way she was going to get bias binding made out of that fabric, so she decided to use bias binding from the haberdashery, which was a little bit of a cheat really, and I think the ju judges did note that uh, because everybody else had made their own. Um, not showing that particular skill in, able, in being able to make it and, and attach it as well. And the, co the cover buttons seem to uh, stump a few of them. I don't think it's a particularly um, difficult um, technique to, to do. It's just that everybody had left it till the last five or ten minutes, which is what Esme said that they were clearly going to do, to, to try and do five of them and attach them and sew them on as well. So Mark ended up using just normal buttons and I don't think he got them all attached neither. So at the end of the day, there was only really Claire, I think, that had finished hers. And she did French, she did French seams as well. Um, really teeny tiny French strip seams, which, which obviously impressed the judges. Claire, Liz and Nicole all used fabrics that had uh, scalloped edges. So they didn't have to hem their uh, sleeves or the bottom of the hems. Again, another bit of a time saver, which is quite a clever, clever trick, I think. Um, so yes, we had Claire uh, winning that particular round because she she was the only one to finish, and uh, she used the French seams, so an extra technique there. So onto the transformation, which was um, using Provencal um, tablecloths. And they could make any garment they wanted, man, men's, women's or children's. Uh, and they were quite big tablecloths as well. One or two of them seemed a little bit stumped by it. And I think, I don't know if it was because of the colours or the, the patterns within within them. Um, I think they, you know, a lot of them had a lot of fruit or wheat or whatever within them. And I think the trick was something like that, where you just, just use it as, as fabric. Don't think of it as a tablecloth, just use it as fabric. So we did, we do have in the new book uh, a transformation from a tablecloth. It's not the um, the one from Provence, uh, like like they use on the show. Uh, it's this one here, which is obviously used um, embroidery. Now you can't tell especially well from this photograph, but that bit there is a tablecloth, and then that is just fabric. They've not, they've not used a whole tablecloth for that, which is what they wanted you really to do. You could use extra fabric for that particular challenge. And I think that's quite that's quite pretty. Um, but yeah, it, they, I think it stumped a few of them did that, that particular challenge. Uh, Mark um, was making a, not a cape, he said. <laughs> I kept, kept describing it and it sounded a lot like a cape, but in the end, I think he put a lot of work into his. Um, he put a, 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 some purple fabric up the back, uh, added sleeves, I think they were purple as well, and put pockets on, and a collar, and a button hole. I don't think he managed to get the button on the, on it. He did, he did quite a lot of ma work, did Mark, on that one. Um, and I think he only came forth with it, which really surprised me. Nicole went for um, trousers, uh, I think she said they were Samba inspired trousers. So she worked with the circle of the tablecloth and made some huge wide leg trousers and then added um, some ruffles at the bottom, which probably inspired by the, the next round with the flamenco round. That, that was probably probably in her mind. Um, so she, hers looked quite effective actually, but she got down uh, graded for um, not pattern matching at the front and it did jar quite a lot actually. Uh, she did sort of make a bit of a boo-boo and sew, sew up the legs and ended up making a skirt. Uh, but she uh, she came fifth with that one and I think it, they said that that was because it still looked like a tablecloth or looked most like a, the original um, piece of uh, fabric that they gave them. Uh, and then we uh, had 
Claire who did a little girl's dress and was bearing in mind they only have 90 minutes for this um, yeah she did a whole little girl's dress it had puff sleeves it had bias binding at the front it had a bias binding loop, loop at the back gathered skirt really nice use of the um, placement of the um, of the patterns even had time to make a little apron at the end of it out of a little bit of uh, white fabric and a few people have, have sort of commented about um, how the bias binding was coming away at the front, which it, it was. She had 90 minutes, she made a dress, come on, <laughs> she, she did okay, I think. Um, yeah, Liz tried a bit of draping and she um, she commented that she always does better in these rounds when she does, it starts from draping. Um, and she did a, uh, she, so she started draping onto the mannequin and, and did a few pleats and darts and she, I think she was really, really stumped to start off with what to do uh, and then it sort of turned into this one thing with a huge, one big huge arm that took in, in the sort of curve of the, of the tablecloth uh, and it almost had a Japanese kimono type of sat, start, look to it which sort of prompted her then to make a big obi belt to go with it. Um, and the judges really quite liked that. For me, that that looked more like a tablecloth than either Mark's or Nicole's. Um, but it's, it's personal taste, isn't it? And then Matt's, I have no idea what Matt was making. <laughs> I don't think he did. <laughs> he started with a choker. Uh, it, it cut round the lemons a little bit and then started with a choker, which we fastened with Velcro, then put a D-ring on this choker. I'm not kidding, if you didn't see it, it was literally a strip of fabric about, I don't know, four inches wide, which he attached to this D-ring and, and fastened round the back, and that were his top. Uh, it, it, you know, I don't know what it was for, <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> and then did a, a skirt, uh, which had little D-rings at the side as well. I mean, it, there were some rough bits on that, uh, but he got, you know, he got ranked third, I think, above Matt. Nicole came fifth, Claim, Kai came first, Matt came third, Matt came fourth on that one. It really surprised me, did that, um, yeah. So going into the mate to measure round, um, Claire was uh, had for two two first, and and Joe did sort of say yeah, you might as well go to the pub. You don't need to do anything here. The mate to measure round, they had five and a half hours to make a flamenco inspired skirt. So we had quite a few variations of of our interpretation, shall we say, of what what people thought flamenco was. They're not trying to reproduce an, a, you know, an exact replica of a, a flamenco skirt or dress. I think they actually started as dresses uh, in Andalusia in Spain, uh, but have, have you know, morphed into skirts as well. And that's another one where you can look at patterns that uh, might not necessarily fit the bill of a skirt, but you could for perhaps find a dress. And I think that's what Liz, Liz used. Uh, Liz went down the goth route once again. Um, she uh, was inspired by uh, Dracula, the red dress in the Dracula movie, and she used a pattern that, um, I'll in, and I'll insert it, um, she used a pattern that was, was a dress and I think she just used the skirt part of it. So hers was made with um, black and red, it looked like silk to me, I, I wasn't 100% sure what that was, but it, it looked really effective uh, with ruffles, so quite long with ruffles at the bottom and quite a few of them started with the pencil shape, skirt shape and I think if you're looking to recreate that look you could just uh, grab any kind of pencil shape skirt and, and, and put the, the ruffles at the bottom. I've found a couple that I already had. Um, so this five in one skirt again, another one free from a magazine, I've never ever used this one would be ideal um, you could just just put cut it off at wherever you wanted and put the ruffles or extend it in uh, Liz's case and put the put it wherever you wanted it um, oh this simple simple sew one which is a wiggle skirt which is probably even better because it a pencil skirt would flare out ever so slightly whereas a wiggle skirt is more supposed to come in a little bit more 
Um, again, that was another free magazine, uh, free pattern from a magazine. So on to what, what the contestants use. So Matt, once again, self-drafted his um, and used scuba, which I, when I was making my notes, when I was watching it on, on the night, I thought that was a really interesting idea to use a scuba because it would um, it, it would fit really snugly. And if you remember the week before, he had real problems with fitting. Um, so yeah, I think it, it, it had the potential to hug the figure and that's what the, the judges were looking for, something that was going to fit at the waist, fit at the hips, uh, and then, you know, have all the drama at the bottom. Um, and they were looking for impact and drama. I've never heard impact and drama mentioned so many times in one programme, but that's clearly what they were looking for. Um, so Mark used the uh, red and yellow scuba, and I think had he um, either used a, a not not bothered putting a zip in and just brought this waistband in, so it had completely negative ease, and perhaps uh, used elastic in it. Or, as Esme kept saying to him, you need interfacing in it, Matt. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it could have used some interfacing, I think. And he put the most ginormous zip in down the bottom. I don't know what, what he was thinking with that. So I don't know if it was a lack of understanding of fabric with that one with Matt. Or, or whether his scuba was heavier than they anticipated. But scuba's like any fabric. You can get it in, in various different ways. But you can, it is quite heavy and you could see when the model was uh, showing it at the end of the show, it, w it was falling down. So on, on, the, on a mate to measure um, uh, round, it needs to fit, not fall down. Um, but apart from that, I think it looked quite, quite effective. Claire used, I think, a pattern from a book. And I think if you, if you, if you do watch it as closely as I do, because I'm a bit sad like that, there was a, a clip where there was a page from a book and um, lots of uh, tr mathematic trickery, and I think she just adapted to put uh, adapted that pattern to put um, a flounce at the bottom using using um, probably pie, which we've all tried to probably tried to forget since school. Um, she yeah she she had a. Um, a really quite a deep waistband and she actually put boning into a waistband and she used a, a blue brocade curtain fabric which looked I thought I thought it looked really nice um, Esme remarked at the end of it that it still looked like curtains and she was going to put netting at the bottom of it and I don't I think it would have spoiled it I think maybe some other fabric perhaps but she had netting in her hand and she just didn't have time to, to put that on she had miles and miles of hemming and it, I couldn't see c properly. You could see that she did a single hem, whether she did that doubled as well, which it did look like in one, one at one point. That that's a lot of that was a lot of hemming. Uh, they all had a lot of hemming to do, to be honest. Um, it's it's quite that was quite a quite a feat. Um, so yeah, Claire's really didn't fit um, very very well, uh, and she she didn't quite finish because she didn't do what she she set set out to do. Mark. Um, I think went for the, what did he say? He said he was going to keep it simple and do it well, uh, which I think earlier on in the series might have served him well. I think that was Teresa's uh, little go-to, but um, I think perhaps um, at this stage he really needed to um, get something more fitted. Although I liked his and I thought his was probably the most wearable. Um, so it is, he used a wrap skirt and he used the Simplicity 8606, you could see that on the show. I found a couple of wrap skirts very, very similar, uh, but as I was making my notes, I, I was immediately reminded of the Vanessa Pousset skirt, which is called La Bohème, which I absolutely love. I thought that, that would have been a real good contender for this show at this time. Uh, and I, I'm, I, I did have my finger on the, on, on the buy button for that one. Uh, had I been going on holiday this, this year, I think I would have made that. Uh, sadly, I'm not, so I'm in the same boat as everybody else. So the three patterns that I found, uh, are, there's one from the um, So magazine, which is called the Iris Ruffle Skirt. Uh, pretty sure the instructions are on, on the website for that one. And, uh, the picture of it is in a leopard skin. It's very, very similar to what Mark did. 
if you look at the the cover art of of the eight six zero six and and that that particular skirt, and you can make it as long as you like, and you can put as many ruffles on as you like, make it as much uh, flamenco esque as you as you like. We would add the uh, crest skirt, and uh, I think I'm going to make that um, as well because. Uh, I think that's that's very similar to the Vanessa Pouze one. I think that's close enough for me, uh, and I think that would make a really good, good flamenco esque uh, uh, Mark's interpretation of that uh, a flamenco esque sort of skirt. So on to Nicole's. Use the folk wear flamenco dress. So that's this is another example of using a dress and uh, African wax print. So I think it was very very Nicole was this and uh, celebrating all all the different cultures there. So she did it, you know, using African wax print print, print uh, and uh, for a Spanish dress. It's just a, just a celebration of true international sewing that one. And it was really effective. I can't cannot take that away from her. It looked really good. Uh, so yeah, she she went very clashy clashing and sort of way out of my comfort zone for that kind of clashing. But it, it did it did look really good. I think at some one point she said she'd done fifteen meters of hemming and she trimmed it all with a, a gold uh, trim all the way around. She did run out at one point and had to use something else. So yeah, but it did. It looked really really good. So Nicole ended up with garment of the week for for hers. Uh, I think that uh, Esme Esme particularly liked it and, and remarked on how um, how modern the uh, the wax print was. Uh, and yeah, she she seemed to really really like that one. And on to my challenge. So I. Um, I was going to originally try and uh, recreate the puff sleeves and I might do one day um, with one of the patterns that I've got there um, but it's not oh God, I've got flouncy sleeves on now this is probably as about as flouncy as I'd go on a sleeve. I do have quite a lot of uh, African wax print that I've bought in the past for bag making it just seems to have the the right structure for it and I'll show you a couple here that I've, I've made in the past. Oh. There's there's one that I keep I keep my knitting in, and uh, a huge one here. Again, another big knitting bag. These are all all free patterns that I've picked up all, over the years, and these little storage storage bags, uh, and the big one there. So it's all knitting in here. <laughs> so. You usually get around about six yards with with those so I've made all all that and some others that I've not shown you and I've still you know I've still got a fair amount of that left uh, and this is this has come from Walthamstow um, and I don't know what kind of uh, cat quality I've been buying um, but I've just watched um, it's been Ankara Appreciation Week I think it's called on Instagram this last couple of weeks or so and Juliet Uzar, who was the winner of last year's Sewing Bee, who, if you remember, she made a fantastic um, jumpsuit out of uh, two different sorts of Ankara or wax print. Um, and I was just been watching her uh, talking about the different types. And I will link it below because if you're interested in working with uh, Ankara or wax, African wax print, uh, she's got some really good tips and tricks on her her. Um, channel about working with it um, and how to treat it and what have you so I wasn't right sure whether you should um, wash it first or not I, I do always wash my fabrics but this was be always been for bag making so you wouldn't necessarily wash that sort of thing um, so yes I'll show you a couple that I've, I've picked up over the over the ta over the years so I've got this this purple one with yellow triangles on and uh, this orange coloured one. Now that would be way, way, way out of my comfort zone with that. Um, it just, it just would. Um, and then, but this one, oh, this one, again, this is from, uh, from Walthamstow, I think. Um, this is a bit more, more me, it's definitely more, more my colours. And I have made packing cubes out of this. So I thought that would be, be fun to use. 
uh, and then I've got that one that I actually won um, and that's from Dovetailed and I think this is possibly a better a better quality. You always get um, six yards on these sets. It says uh, six yards, just short of four, four, five and a half metres. So they just go on, they go on forever. Uh, and the, I thought that, and, and I've never thought to, to make garments with them because they are quite stiff. They don't really have the drape. I decided I would make something inspired by Nicole's based on uh, using a, spe a pencil uh, skirt and a bit of, a bit of maths. <laughs> so I've come up with this. So mine's not nearly as flouncy as, as uh, Nicole's was. So essentially I took the simple sew um, pattern and made it high low so I could I did just did it on myself decided where I would make it uh, cut it off there and then it's lower at the back and I had this yellow this yellow was again it was bought as a contrast to make bags with and uh, I will insert some pictures of me wearing it rather than just flashing it at the camera because you just can't get an idea of it but I thought I'd just give it a go and just see what see what uh, what I came up with, and um, yeah, it was good fun. So what I did to uh, calculate how big the ruffle needed to be was I measured the once I cut off the bottom, I measured that circumference and worked out using pi um, what radius radius I needed. But it was only a semicircle, um, and then joined those together and then uh, fastened it. Uh, sewed it onto the bottom of the skirt and I did that twice just what the yellow one was a little bit deeper than the the um the, the conch, conch shells I think of those on there so yeah I'd got fun doing that I enjoyed it and uh it will probably be reserved as a holiday skirt I just need to find a little top to wear with it I can't really wear yellow next to my face I don't think so it'd have to be blue I think or black I don't suppose it matters does it um but yeah I need it's, uh, it was good fun doing it. So I think um, to get more of effect, an effect of how Nicole did hers, hers was definitely more flouncy than that. Um, so maybe it was just the use of the um, trim at the bottom. But she said she'd, she'd done 15 metres of hem and there's not definitely not 15 metres of hem there. Uh, so I think she must have done, uh, doubled the size of the... Um, the circumference that's fitting into the skirt and then gathered it in so yeah that's that was good fun i enjoyed doing that and uh yeah i will probably make uh that wrap skirt as well at some point oh so, yeah uh nicole won garment of the week for hers and sadly we said goodbye to mark which which was a real shame really because he'd been solid throughout um throughout all the the series really it, it was just a bad uh, really bad choice of fabric in, on probably two occasions because he even though they liked his skirt they did criticize him for being able to see the wrong side of the, the flounce had he used something like a lightweight crepe or something like that which was the same color both sides it probably would have been a bit better um so yeah it's a, it was a real shame to see, see Mark go um, but it's a competition somebody's got to go and he, he said that as much as himself sort of halfway through that he would you know it, it was in danger of going but I think both he and Nicole were in danger of going and I was a little bit surprised um, that it came so low down in the trans transformation challenge but uh, yeah, somebody, somebody has to go. So next week we're down to four contestants to the semi-finals and um, it's movie week or Hollywood week. So I think we've got a, a, a 50s inspired, I don't know if it was a Marilyn dress for the pattern round and a transformation round. It said how, out of this world, I don't know what that's going to be about. And then a flapper dress for the, um, for the made to measure round. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let me know below who you think, if you've been watching it, who you think is going to win out of, we've got now, we've got Liz, Claire, Nicole and Matt left. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think Claire and Liz are pretty solid, so they'd have to do something fairly, 
fairly um, uh, out there. I don't know. It, it, it's hard to know what the judges are looking for because it, it is it is really quite difficult to, to choose. My money's on either Liz or Claire, I think. I think they're the, going to be the uh, quiet ones. Nicole's shone all the way through, um, but I think, and she does try, really push herself with uh, making things difficult for herself. So whether I don't know whether that'll come to bite her or not. It's not that I don't, I don't like one over the other. It's, it is, I'm just trying to sort of judge who's going to win now. Um, I'm not so sure about Matt, he's very, very hit and miss. He's, uh, the, the pattern drafting that he's done has been amazing, um, it, but it just hasn't always pulled off. And you, you really need to understand um, fabric and how fabric works. But it could be could be any of them, I think, really. So let me know below who you think is going to win. And um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind subscribing and giving me a thumbs up, and I will put again, I'll put a blog post together on my website frugalissima.com uh, with all the details of the fa fabrics and the the patterns that I've been able to find. And yeah, I don't know if anybody else uh, attended the sewing weekend uh, this week. That's the reason why I'm a little bit late um, recording this video this week because uh, I, I was. Uh, busy with the sewing weekend or all day Saturday and Sunday so I made a few things from there which I'd like to share with you if I get a chance to record again before um, the next show uh, yeah well, I did quite I did about three three different things during the weekend so I really enjoyed it okay well thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I shall see you next week okay bye. <laughs>